On August 2nd, 1973, Hall of Famer George Brett put on a Royals uniform for the first of 2,707 times. At 20 years old, Brett didn't stick with the Royals right away, but went on to put together one of the great baseball resumes of all time. Ground ball up the middle. Base hit! Way to go, George. Make it 3,154 hits. The basics? He ranks 15th all-time on the hits list. He won three batting crowns in three separate decades, piled a 305 career average, and won the 1980 MVP. In that season, Brett had as serious a flirtation with 400 as any hitter since Ted Williams, finishing at 390. In his time in Kansas City, the Royals were in AL power. They made the playoffs seven times on Brett's watch and reached the World Series in 1980 and 85. In 85, Brett hit 360 in the postseason with three home runs and six RBIs to lead the Royals to their first world championship, beating the Cross State Cardinals in seven games. High fly ball. Motley going back to the track. No outs to go. The Royals have won the 1985 World Series, and they converge on the mound and hold an impromptu celebration. The definitive George Brett moment happened on July 24, 1983. Facing the rival Yankees in the Bronx, Brett hit a two-run ninth-inning homer off of Goose Gossage to put the Royals up 5-4. Yankee manager Billy Martin challenged that Brett's pine tar was beyond the allowed 18 inches from the knob. It was, and Brett was ruled out, and the umpires declared the game over. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, the Yankees win. He's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look at, look at this. Brett is out. And He's steaming mad. He is out and having to be forcibly restrained from hitting plate umpire Tim McClellan. The Royals protested, and upon review, the home run was allowed to stand, and the Royals finished off their victory a month later. Regarded as one of the greatest third basemen of all time, Brett was voted into the Hall while being named on 98.2% of the ballots, the fifth highest percentage in history.